Hello, it's Michael again. I'm just going to talk you through what I've sent in the pack of the Hackaday Best Product Award. You've got three fish feeders. You've got a 20 millimeter fish feeder, auger based, and a time control control box. You've got a temperature compensating automatic feeder with a slightly bigger fish feeder. You've also got a vision based automatic fish feeder. So this uses a feedback loop and a camera to control the fish food. You've got a hopper for your fish tanks. Small power cable for the small feeder and a large 6 amp power feeder for the other two. A couple of adapters to change my plug into an American plug. This unit here, which is a mock up of the final case I want to include the mod uh, control systems in. You also have some fish food for testing and a collection bucket too, so you can reuse the fish food. So I'm just going to run through a bit of stuff quickly before we uh, before we start about why this project is important and what problem it addresses. So why ought it? At the moment. Fish are fed usually once a day. Currently, um, so what's the problem with this? The problem is they actually grow much better if you feed them multiple times a day. The reason that you feed the fed one time a day at the moment is because it's a very time-consuming process to feed the fish the right amount of food. So, how much of an increase can we get uh, by feeding them multiple times a day the right amount of food? Some scientific studies have seen increasing the forty percent increases in weight and twenty-ish percent increase in efficiency of food input. So. 40% more fish for 20% less food. Quite, that's quite okay, it's a cool project. So why does it actually matter? Well, there are 156 billion kilograms of fish produced each year. So if you can use technology to increase that by 40%, and do it 20% more efficiently, that's a lot of extra food worldwide. Commonly that we don't use automate, automation that much in fish feeders because working out what to feed fish is quite complex. It, let's start with some of the basics about feeding fish. You've got the feeding interval. This is how often you feed the fish per day. Now, this changes for species, but it looks something like this. Number of feeds per day versus age of fish. When the young ones, they need feeding a lot, and then it'll drop down and kind of flatline when they get older. So the, one of the, let's use tilapia as an example. When they're young, you feed them eight times a day, and then later on, the best, most efficient weighs three times a day and why is this more efficient it's to do with the size of the stomach because it grows a computer can take can, can understand this very well uh, how much to feed them this is a little bit more complex because it depends on temperature breed of fish and the age of the fish again. So how much of a difference does this make? Let's just do another graph. We've got temperature of the water here. So let's start at 0, 5, 26 degrees C. Um, how much should you feed fish? It's based on the percent of the body weight.
it goes quite a lot like this. You feed them a little bit when it's really cold just to keep them ticking and then you'll have an increase and then you'll flatline at about 26 degrees. So here you'll feed them 2% of the body weight per day in food and here you'll feed them anything up to 16%. So this is quite a big, you can see temperature has quite a big effect on it. Eight times as much food depending on the temperature. So let's talk about how we can implement that. We can use open loop control or feedback. Open loop We've got to make just model the system, so we've got to put all the inputs in, like the temperature, the fish, loads of inputs. So we've got a good mathematical model of the system. Feedback control is a little bit more forgiving. All we need to do is measure the amount of food, the food intake, and then we can work everything else back from the feedback loop. So what does this mean for the products that I've sent you? You've got this temperature compensated unit running on a Raspberry Pi and a webcam. This is the feedback unit. It'll watch it'll watch the pond, see how much food is in there and keep topping it up. The temperature one will take a measurement of the temperature. You've already inputted the number of fish. And it'll do all the maths to get, do a good estimate of how much food to feed them. Now how will the, when you're feeding fish by hand, what you do is you feed the fish until they stop feeding fastly. So if you if we're trying to make a computer simulate what a human is doing when he's feeding the fish, he's watching for a decrease in food it the rate of food intake. So what we would do with the vision based one is measure the input of food to keep a constant number of food in the pond and then when that starts to decrease we know the fish are full so we stop feeding and then you'd run that three times a day or eight times a day depending on the age of your fish. But anyway that's enough of the boring stuff. Let's run some examples. We'll start with a really cool vision base one. So we'll just set it up on the table here. First thing you do is you, you get your little plastic pond, clip on your camera, and point it down. Now what's this? This is just simulating the pond. I have done the test in the proper pond and the camera does a good job there as well. So what will happen, the camera will read how much food is in the pond and if there's not enough it will turn it on. So let's add some of the 4ml food to the hopper. Get our power supply and plug it in. Just here. Now, because Pi draws quite a lot of power, I can't power it from a usual voltage regulator. So, what I've done is I've included USB power, so plug the USB power into the USB plug into the Raspberry Pi and connect it to the wall mount. I've got a power outlet on my desk here. So the Pi's booting up. The Pi will take a couple of seconds to boot up, no doubt. Maybe a bit longer, a minute. So you don't need the screen connected to this, but I'm going to use it in the next stage, so I'll connect it now. So the Pi is booting up, and on there is the script that controls the automatic feeder. So it should automatically boot up 
automatically start the script, turn the feeder on and add food. Yep, it has. Okay. So if you look here, the camera's got a narrow field of view, it's looking just here at the pond, it's counted the number of food. The camera can currently see 20 pieces of food, because don't forget it's only looking here. So when I lift this up and push the food out of the camera's view, the feeder should top it back up. Yep, it's working as expected. Just as expected. So that just shows that we can spot food in. We can spot fish food by the camera. Now it's a little bit harder to do it in the pond, but I have done it. And it does. It does work. It does feed the fish. What, I've, what the work I've got to do now is to pull the rate of food consumption out and just clean it up a little bit. Now I'll show you just now what what this is actually doing what the um, computer is actually doing so let's plug the HDMI cable in plug your mouse or keyboard in and reboot because it needs to start the screen. And on the desktop here, I've included some quick links for you that will shut down the auto run script. So, just here we'll go to the run GUI uh, and execute it in terminal because we've got some outputs in the terminal. So, this image just here is what... I don't know if you can see that, there's no decent... Uh, screen recording software for the Raspberry Pi that I know of, so we're going to have to do it this way. So I don't know how, much, how well you can see that. We've got three windows that come up. We've got, this is the normal picture. So that's the image from the camera. Then what we do is we turn that to a grey scale. And then depending on that, the level of the grey, we turn it into a black and white plot and then do a blob find. These are the blobs of fish food that the camera can see. This is what the camera can see. This is the grey scale and this is the blobs it thinks it's detected. So let's have a look. Does It, it looks pretty similar. Now this runs in real time. So when I move the tub now, we should we see the food disappear. And the camera should turn up the food on until it gets 17 blobs of food. So we overshot a little bit there. Um, as far as the camera is concerned, it can see 17 bits of food, so it's turned the feeder off. It's not the best script ever, because if you look here, I've not done any eye level blob detection so when the food groups together it just counts it as one blob. This is small stuff that we can work on later just to prove the basic concept works. So we just showed you the vision feedback system. Let's show you the feed forward system. This is the proof of concept here. What it's comprised of is an Arduino microcontroller, a relay, a auger base feeder, this this is quite a nice feeder to make for an OBS, but on the final product, you'll be linking this control box up to a commercial unit. So, 
How can we test that the idea works? Well on this we've got the input power, the main on and off switch, a porthole for the Arduino so we can alter the variables, an aut automatic feed-in switch so you can press this to, uh, to start the feeder for the test, the test that I'm just about to run. And this potentiometer you can see here is how we put in the weight of fish in the system. So the controller already knows what type of fish we've got. It's got the temperature um, relationships with feeding stored in it. But the weight of the fish can change as they're growing. So uh, we input it through this uh, potentiometer. Far left is 5 kilos of fish. Far right is 20 kilos of fish. So it gives us a good um, growing range. Now, I've already loaded this up with a cord on the computer. I know the temperature is about 26 degrees in here. And I've worked out how much food this should give me. Um, I'll just work it out again in front here. So going off the top of my head, at 26 degrees we need to feed them 12% of the body fat, body fat, body weight per day in food. This is set up to feed 24 times a day. So we've got 12 times the weight which is 5 kilos divided by 24. Ah, uh, 0.12 because it's percent, isn't it? So divide by 100. 0 0.025, which is 25 grams. So the multifunction button is because we don't want to wait for this unit to actually turn on used for the vision base one. Don't plug the small power supplies into these units because these motors require quite a lot of power. This is a six amp one. Okay, so we've turned we've plugged it in, turn the power switch off at the back. And let's add a little bit of food to the hopper. Right, so we calculated that based on the temperature now in the room, it should deliver us about 25 grams of food. So let's hold this button in when I turn the power on and see how many grams of food it does deliver. Okay. delivered 30 grams. The temperature must have increased slightly since we was last in here, since I last took the temperature measurement. Um, the next step is to feed the feedback into the hopper. Get the temperature probe and a cold glass of water. Now, because the temperature, we just simulated the temperature of the pond dropping, it should now deliver much less, it should deliver less than 30 grams of food. Let's give the temperature sensor a second to um, calibrate and change the temperature because it's got quite a lot of thermal mass. Right, let's hold the button in when we turn it on. And it's delivered 16 grams of food. So it is varying with respect to the temperature. 
Now an easier way to do that because you, obviously you don't you don't want to be running that all the time is to take the unit, remove the side cover, plug it into a computer running at the Arduino IDE and boot the screen up. Five, four, three, two, one. So now we've connected it to the computer. We've got the Arduino open. Let's just click the serial monitor. It should output quite a lot of info information. Yeah, it's telling us now if I turn the auto scroll off. It's telling us now here. that the water temperature is 22 the user has selected 5 kilos of fish which I have and that it should feed 23 grams on the hour every hour to feed the fish the best so let's twist the the bit where I tell it how much fish I've put in yeah, the fish is varying, it's going down 16, 17, 16, 14, 13, and back down to 5. Um, let's just get the temperature probe and check that that corresponds, that changes with temperature. At the moment, it's at 20. I'll put a light. A, cigarette lighter under it and we'll warm it up and see that it's responding to temperature increases yep it's gone all the way up to 79 degrees that'll be quite hot so it's working now while I'm here on the computer, the smaller 22mm unit is exactly the same. So I'll unplug that and plug the USB into the smaller unit. And let's see what variables that one's got. Need to select the serial port. Right. In this one, the potentiometer, we just change how long it'll feed for. So I've set it in the program. The potentiometer represents 60 seconds to 300 seconds. And it'll feed every 60 minutes because this one's set up for um, very small fry fish. Eventually, because these are only just testing basic concepts, the feed time will be automated as well. Now we'll go back to unplugging this one and just showing you the time feeder. So we'll take the main power supply. This is 12 volts as well. We'll add 12 volts. Um, I'll just get the hop. We'll put a hopper on it. We check that that was working. Um, when I add food to this unit. We can either manually feed just by holding the button, like before, and it'll start when you let go. That's so you can feed the fish when you're there, so you can check that they're healthy. Or we can again turn the main power button off, hold this in, and turn it on. 
and now it'll stay turned on. It's simulating one of its feeding schedules, which is every hour. As you can see, this mechanical portion of the feeder is very slow, but it's okay for a very small aquarium or pond. The actual product that I plan to build is the control unit itself, not these um, fish feed, not the mechanical portion of the fish feeder, because when we're talking about the 150 billion kilos of fish produced. They're not produced in small ponds, they're produced in large, large ponds. This feeders of this size just aren't going to cut it. But if you do want to build one of these, I've put the build tutorials online. It's relatively cheap to make the... That was a minute up, I've been talking for a minute. You... 20mm auger drill bit and a 20mm electrical tee. A very a cheap 4 quid motor. Total cost to make this portion of the feeder is like £12. So the, if you want to make an automatic feeder for your aquarium, this is a good starting point. Now, I know the products that I've introduced aren't the best of products aesthetics wise. And that's why I've introduced this unit, which is the unit I plan to implement it in, because I like the unit. It's It just feels good quality, it's got a backlit LCD screen. Now, if you take a look, if you wait one second I'll plug it in. This unit's used to control the temperature of a heated propagator. It's got a pretty simple user interface and an LCD. What I'd like to do is get a better LCD with more lines and have the current time, the current feed, the next scheduled feeding time, the past feeding amount, any problems you want to be aware of, and then just have you click down for this and move left to right to select your options. So with a controller which will incorporate the vision one, the temperature one, whichever you'll just have a, a list of lines up when you hold the button, the set menu type of fish, current age of fish, number of fish type of food, type of feeder you'll click enter and then the control box will take care of everything else for you, the fish will grow to the maximum capabilities And I think I took enough of your time talking about fish feeders. But thank you for anyone who did listen and watch.